Yeah, yeah, another blast to the past, and it's Space Station again. I'm here to say shit I've definitely said before, because I want to take you back to the days when 30 players was enough to concern the fire marshal. Now it's a flame that can be put out with a swift DDoS piss. Wait, that doesn't make sense, since a higher player count won't provide better protection against a cyber attack? Mass shootings exist, and internet cretins love them. Speaking of which, people in my Discord tend to complain about how Space Station used to be a game about fun. They go on to say that nowadays, most servers are too serious due to roleplay. I just assume those folks are mad they can't drop in bombs or say faggolid anymore without getting banned. Come on, edgeheads. We've made it to space. Hate speech is obsolete. If you can't figure out the millions of other ways to bring someone down, then you're not being creative enough. Take it from me, the guy who's been making the same type of videos for over five years. Well, that concludes the intro ramble. I'll get to the VG rounds now, starting with the one that I totally teased in the last episode. Brack Banner will be the remaining name, and as of now or whenever this was recorded, I'm the late arrival warden. On my first day of prison, I was introduced to a wizard named Slippin' Jimmy, a meme that came out too recently to be terrorizing these archaic halls. At least the show the wizard was putting on makes for a better spin-off of a spin-off. He was using his powers to put clown-ass janitors and clowns to shame, because tripping the masses never gets old, until it does. The magic man made it impossible to walk. Any travel has to be done via spine-scraping sliding, so I slid towards the kitchen where Randolph P. Checkers was being his normal normal wholesome self. After rifling through the armory, I was well off enough to spare the chef known as Text a Gun. I figured it'd be a nice gesture due to prior knowledge, I knew that was his thing. He might actually need it if one of these hungry commies get pissed about their order of free food being messed up. Yeah, this place does have THE United States economy, but that money is for gambling, not for paying for shit. In my soft cashless palm resided one of Texas' burgers. Before my mouth could relocate it, a slippery flood evicted the breaded meat. Slippin' Jimmy was at it again, this time acting as a workout partner by slapping fast food away from me. Every single gym bro's goal is to get their friend buff and steal their body. The wizard pulled this off at the exact moment I tased him. He doubled up on perfect timing since the captain began gunning down the villain's former apparatus with me in it, allowing this body snatcher to get up, gloat, and walk off with my legs. Captain C was lodged into me from all those captain-related bullets. Editor's note. I was on a Discord call, so this round contains no audio. Captainship means you gotta show the crew who's boss by making them fight each other for the reward of getting on your level of access. The HOP agreed to the terms and announcements were made. Watching civilians stab each other with shards of glass was entertaining. However, I felt like a pro-rioting politician supporting the cause up until their own window started getting broken. Now that it may affect me personally, I was scared. To add to my fear, that Discord call I was on gave me a metagame leak about revolutionary activity. I wasn't gonna cheat and hunt down the revs. I would have to wait for them to come to me. And that was already happening because according to one of the robots trying to keep Saints Row alive, an intruder was in my office. Knowing that, I hesitated before stepping onto the soap welcome mat. I was then greeted by a locker mole with an energy crossbow. He shot me and apologized, though a flashbang ruined the sincerity. Once we had the perpetrator restrained, we put a good boy implant in him. As we were interrogating him, one of those all-access winners ran in and tossed a room-clearing grenade. Everyone in there got obliterated. Me, the HOP, a detective, those boys orgs, crossbow, Simon, and the corgi. Definitely an impressive move. Don't know if it was improvised or if the apologetic shooter was a decoy in an elaborate plan. Alright, sound is back and I'm a legit solo player again reprising my role of bartender. I arrive clutching an empty grocery bag cause inflation. Food shortages come and go but the black market always thrives. In fact, it was doing so well one of its representatives was handing out free illegal goods. A security officer didn't appreciate my bar arming the average Joe. Usually security on VG seems similar to Woodstock 99. They're just here to party like the rest of us. While SEC does oversee a lot less maniacs than the Peace Patrol did, they do typically deal with the same amount of burning. That greedy cop grabbed what he could and tried to fit it all in one locker. A few guns refused to go in, yet went right through the door like SWAT teams that break doors for a cheap laugh. A really stupid line leads to a really stupid move, involving me walking into the open security department and getting flashed by their lamp guard. The warden was shaken with jittery joy when he saw me fall into the flash trap. He took my gear and asked who was supplying the bar with that fine assortment of contraband. Of course I snitched. I told him it was Thomas Laser. I don't want to do minutes of jail time for receiving round long bad influence. Returning to the bloody footprint covered streets, I met 4chan himself. He made sure to use the appropriate lexicon in one of the last bastions where you can be racist and gay as you want. The man is known as Anonymous, he even kept that a secret by hiding it in parts across a full name. A gimmick I've seen before, could be one guy or an army. 
Shortly thereafter, I was window shopping for a ship. I went for the smash and grab, but the anti-theft gust of space put me on my ass. Someone became a casualty, therefore Anonymous was pissed. Deep down, he wore a white hat, acting as a savior for the disenfranchised by putting me into a rubbery safe space. Though he really didn't like Jews or people he deemed to have shitty skin. I tried to show him the light of normie humor via classic unoffensive suffocation, but he had a jetpack to lead him astray. He left me floating to a lonely demise. I had to use my ID like a passport to fly home. Anonymous still wanted to nurse me back to health. He was trying to give me Stockholm Syndrome by keeping me alive in his tent and calling me a retard. I had to beanbag him to escape. Farewell, no one checks lockers. I came out of hiding to be a botanist. Now, botanists don't have real jobs. Plants grow on their own. Those colorful indicators on the foot baths are like the ones in cars. Merely signs of decay you should ignore. Botany is supposed to be the study of plants. Yet, you play the role of a farmer whose sole purpose is to be the chef's wingman, assisting him to get in everyone's ass. He might break you off a little cock every now and then, but you're not going to be the one getting meatballs deep in the crew's stomachs. You don't have complete pimp control over the cook's sex life, since he has access to walk into the botany department and grow crops his damn self. Meanwhile, the mutagen plug known as chemistry does determine botany's level of happiness. If your dealer isn't home, you're legally allowed to break in and steal his meth lab. While trying to decide where to put the chem dispenser, someone bombed the oxygen out of botany. Fortunately, the chef saved me from the suck, which made his kitchen jealous enough to attack me. Botany was a lost cause at this point. I went to the HOP to get chemistry access. He agreed and stated that nothing matters anyways. A true nihilist. I should have asked for all access. I returned the chem dispenser and got so into reading the chemistry wiki that I almost died from the empty oxygen tank I had snatching my breath. Still rocking with botany access, I grew ambro for nourishment. Ground the herb for extraction, I also discovered it contained opium, mescaline, and something called tanner acid. Found out later it was actually tannic acid, but I was too high to learn new words. Out of the bunch, I chose to take the video game mescaline to pay tribute to idols such as Hunter S. Thompson and Jake the Snake Roberts. Next, I prescribed myself the speed given to hard labor. I wasn't putting in any work. Instead, I just misused the drug to walk slightly faster like a juiced up geezer. I had overdosed after one use. My heart gave out on me, leaving me dead in the hallway. A drug administrating shaman who was used to these kind of things dragged my corpse to medbay for cloning. To make up for loss of muscle gains while dead, I ingested tons of creatine in order to go Hulk. Punching through walls and walking into any bathroom you want is something only green trans athletes raging with testosterone can do. Nevertheless, it's a very temporary luxury. You'll explode yourself in less than a minute. Then you'll be a ghost brain staring at your own guts. Become religious, be a chaplain, and you'll see neat omens such as blue organs and bleeding space. I'd missed out on exterminating a library spider nest. Flamethrowers without any fuel told the story. The chapel had been hit by a hurricane and was taken over by immovable dildos that varied in size. Seeing as society was falling apart, I turned to science and was given an energy gun by a roboticist. I wanted to make sure it worked, resulting in me joining a scientist for target practice. Later on, another example of me missing out on a succulent spider slaying spree was rubbed right in my face. Facial problems continued upon getting cursed with a clown mask. Guess it gets you high. Colors mean high. The mask was irremovable and the doctors couldn't help. Air was gone out of med bay and this clown mask wasn't attaching to my oxygen tank. I tried to run for the lack of oxygen when suddenly greenness took over. It made me look sickly. I could either die of natural suffocation or let a blob eat me. I picked to go out shooting until I ran out of ammo. Then I gave myself to the blob. Space always seems to be a filthy meat market if you join in late, because here I was on a different round as the head of security with the same welcoming from before. Early into the shift, I was already drunk off the alcohol hot box that was emitting from one of the patrons in the bar. Came home after that night of fragrance drinking to find that my department had been broken into and someone killed my dog, a plot for every vengeful leader character on this game. When I hauled my flipped mutt to the repair shop, I contracted another face disease, this time featuring a horse's head. Luckily, a doctor that knew what he was doing cured me with a vaccine and acid to the face. No longer seeing through the eyes of a horse, I spotted a ninja getting pulled through the halls. Thought the ninja was dead for a second. Realizing this was probably a stealthy trap, I whipped out my Glock and shot him. He slashed my leg with his energy blade and blocked some of my bullets. While fleeing to medbay, we ran into each other. I was firing stunts, however the ninja escaped with smoke and uh, eye sculpting. Treatment failed. I think the ninja slipped some poison in me. Perhaps the doctors performed a little malpractice. Sometimes you won't know unless you read everything in chat. 
Either way, I got cloned. My new life hadn't changed anything. My dog was still dead and the captain thought it was funny. He even showed me a mug shot he captured. The joke was actually kind-hearted since he revived the pup for me. Now I could lock it in a room and pet it once around. Off the leash, I slipped on wet floor and laid there long enough to get injected with another dose of horse face. Finally saw the ninja again. I'm glad he didn't stick around to see that I was incapacitated by the jander. Again. Stepping up, I acquired a shuriken that I'd be better off throwing in my own mouth than at a moving target. Went for a reload only to hit a magical barrier that would keep me away from guns. At least a laser rifle stuck by my side during a bee swarm. Plus, Killer Tomato stood rampant providing a harmless ride along with the crew on the emergency shuttle. My final mid-round join began with seeing a security officer getting taken into a private dorm room. I wanted to watch, but got locked out. I reported the forced ERP over the radio, thus beginning the frenzy of everyone trying to get the stylish dark blue jumpsuit off this horny man. He wasn't going down without a fight, taking a doctor hostage back and forth between rooms as he snuck in quick gropes. Eventually, he was arrested for sexual battery and brought to jail. Not wanting to end up a victim, I swiped a godly hammer off the chaplain's desk to help keep my cheeks clenched. Would have had some guns to shove in there for additional blockage, but the mining site appeared to be a meteor, not crate opening lava land. During my desk duties, I noticed that I had been put at the top of every organ donor list to ever exist. All the timelines too, since a lot of them were robotic. You see, my body refused the overstock, which had me puking up entire anatomy textbooks. Feeling invincible, I punched a snake and challenged a shirtless guy with a shotgun to a fight. More of an assault, really. I screamed at him, didn't wait for a response, and smacked him with my hammer. I did give him a few seconds second window to go, only to pull right back into his lane and slam on the brakes to kill him. He was sleeping with the freight now. And that's it. I love old school carefree space station. Here's a bonus one. During a stream, I reverse psychology my way into being an antagonist. I swear to God, if I get traitor, I won't be happy. It's always when I'm streaming. If I do, I'm just gonna throw, give, give someone my weapons and jump out in space. I got to be a vampire for the first time. Uh, I, I speak it into an existence every time I fucking stream. I'm a goddamn vampire. I don't know how to fucking play vampire. Didn't manage to recruit anyone for my Wu-Tang Clan. Just led the detective on a high-speed chase. I was caught, but got away thanks to a cat. My downfall was brought on by an assistant with stun gloves. I was too enamored with his ID and headset to check his backpack. Yep, tally-ho.